All right, here is the video review for DX9's War in Pocket uh, Dutch and Pliskin, which should be fairly obvious once you hear those names as to which one is which. But uh, yeah, basically Optimus and Nemesis Prime from the War in Pocket line. You see they do have trailers. Um, they transform exactly the same, so we're probably just going to focus on one, let's say Dutch, because that's just how it's going to be. Um, but we will show both of them off in both forms on how they work. Now, like I said, the trailers... Uh, I do have a rotational joint in the trailer itself. So, uh, that's nice. And they just peg in. Now you can see there's a little rotational joint here. They just peg in. And then there's a little couple little feet that come down. So when you're not using them, you can uh, have them support. There's also these little pieces right here that support the uh, the trailer when you open it. Inside is a rifle and an axe. They both come with them. Uh, the, the rifle is the peg's a little loose, both in here and uh, in the robot's hand. Uh, just FYI. And of course, the little repair bot. Uh, very much, I mean, just like the old G1. This doesn't open, I don't think. But a uh, little repair claw. <laughs> You can open up, you can also open up this. And there is a little ramp here that slides out if I can get a hold of it. There we go. Mm, come on. You can, hear, you can hear my finger clicking on it. one of those that folds out on each side. Make a little ramp if you want to drive somebody up into the trailer. You want their closed or open. Make sure the door's open. Slide those back up. Click them in. Close it. Pull those up. And the trailer can set off to the side. Pliskin has the same thing. Except um, he comes with a red axe, same rifle, and then a black and red little drone inside the trailer. And here they are in their vehicle modes. It has a very neat transformation, and we'll uh, we'll get to that. The legs are going to pop off, and I don't know if these ball joints here for the legs, um, these are very tight, and it, it could just be tolerances. These are early test samples; these aren't quite final, so that could could be tweaked. But uh, it, just in case it isn't, be be warned. Uh, and part of that could be that uh, they showed up on a hot FedEx truck, and. Um, when I started messing with them, they were still a little warm, so maybe that uh, caused a piece to warp during shipment. Uh, but either way, if mine came on a hot truck, yours might too, so just be aware of that. But you can see there's the peg holes for the trailer to peg together in there. And we'll get to the transformation. Nice square cab. As you can see, like here's actually the front of his chest. Like The way the chest transforms to give him a more cartoony angled chest from the flat cab is actually pretty neat. So to start off here on the legs, we want to, again, lift them out. These panels are tabbed in. And that's part to see it right there. It pops right off. Because the way these panels come, you can see that basically you bring this down, tab it in up here is how you extend the leg. And this panel here, the tab is super tight. Like even popping the leg off, getting that tab, this tab out of here is, is really tough. And that, that'll probably wear down with time, and it could just be the paint on this leg. Um, that's doing it. But you bring that up, you fold this down like this, and then you flip the toe up. And that's basically how you transform the leg. Now, again, we'll try to do this on the other side, but this tab is so tight, it's going to pop. And there's no real... Like, the thing is, like, if I can get decent leverage, the problem is because you're pulling on this, which is also hinged down here, if this were just plagued into the solid leg, it's it's a little it would be a little easier to get 
uh, get this off, but because there's also you're also pulling on this hinge as well as this tab, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. So flip that in, reattach the leg. Hopefully this won't be a problem on the final. Like I said, if this tab were just a little looser, uh, and you could fix, you could easily sand that down or sand this down. There's ways to fix it yourself if you're so inclined. Uh, but you see that gives them kind of cartoony legs. And then from there, go ahead, pop the arms out. The arms do the standard Optimus thing of flipping out to the sides and forward, and then the fists just flip out from there. Flip that forward, open up these two waist tabs here. Lift his head up around like this. And then the chest, bring it down, rotate this whole assembly. You see there's the car windows. Rotate this around, and that brings the angled chest up. It does kind of give him some gap in here, but oh well. Uh, with the yellow lights, a little smoother, a little bit more cartoony. Brings those around, because you can see like here is the, here's the car mode versus the uh, robot mode. Neat way of doing it. Bring that down, lift this down, rotate, uh, flip this piece up behind his head, rotate the waist here, and then flip this panel down, bring the arms up, this panel rotates around and up into the body. Very much like the masterpiece. You're basically bringing this around to hide the wheel and form his uh, form his angled abdomen. Again, takes away from the square there. Then fold this whole thing forward, bring his arms down, turn his head around, and there, is, that's how you get a very cartoonish uh, Optimus from a fairly detailed truck mode. He does have uh, opening windows here. The Matrix is not removable and upside down, but uh, whatever. So he's got the Matrix in his chest, if that is something that you have to have in an Optimus Prime figure. He's got the little axe, which can uh, peg into his hand. Just like a little peg inside there. Uh, I can get that in there. There we go. If you want to give him his energy axe, and he's also got his rifle, which, like I said, is a little wobbly here. A little floor polish or whatever will fix that right up. Posability wise, he's got a ball joint up here at the head with a pretty decent range of motion. Uh, the arms can slide in now a little bit, move forward and back a little bit, uh, but he does have a ball joint at the shoulder, bicep swivel, dual hinged elbows. Although I don't know. Yeah, see, there we go. Okay, guys, you can get him in a decent arm pose there. No wrist swivel because of the hinge. No waist swivel. Like, uh, Well, no waist swivel above the waist. Like the, the inner piece, you can see, does swivel a little bit, although you do have to move the, uh, the plate up a little bit. Ball joint at the hip. There is a, again, they like to pop off, but there is a thigh swivel because of the shape of the legs and the shape of the inner crotch, it, it's hard to get them to twist too much, but you can twist them a little bit. Uh, hinge knees, and then a little toe hinge there as well as some ankle tilt. Go ahead and pop this off. Can rifle in his proper hand. Well, not proper hand, you know what I mean. Here he is with Pliskin. There is some light piping going on. Uh, it's a little bit more noticeable on Pliskin with the red eyes, but uh, they do both have some clear plastic in the back. You can see what I'm talking about with that loose gun. Again, easily fixed, but it is there. So there they are side by side. Pliskin's got his red axe there. So yeah, there's the two of them together. As for Optimus, uh, or Dutch here, Go ahead and move him out of the way just so we have more room for this. So quick size comparisons. Here he is with the Magic Square uh, Fire Extinguisher and Architect. And again, all kind of going for that cartoony look. They look great together. I think those two, the, the, these three guys, look 
pretty nice as a group. With some Iron Factory figures, here he is with Iron Factory Sunstreaker. Again, uh, basic design philosophy a little different, but looks pretty good. Here he is with Iron Factory's Starscream. Here he is with Iron Factory Magnus and Iron Factory uh, Cygnus, City Commander and Cygnus. Let me go ahead and bring that down a little bit so they're not so washed out. And here he is with DX9's Snarl. Again, good scale, good size, a really neat transformation. Um, I hope they tweak a couple of things. Like, like I said, the balls are, while I know how to fix it um, on my own personal copies, uh, like I said, that tab was not as big. Little floor polish on the gun or a little tightening of that peg. Um, a little loosening of the tab here on the thing and maybe tightening the ball joint. I, again, I don't know if it's the fault of the ball joint up in here or if it really is just how tight that peg is combined with the extra leverage of that lower hinge in the leg just coming together to form kind of a oops, you know, type of deal. But uh, all in all, these guys uh, are really nice Optimus design, good truck mode. I like the trailer. I like the way, like the, the functionality of the swivel and, and, and the things that the trailer can do even though it is basically a box. The transformation on this is really cool. The way it goes from a fairly detailed truck to a very cartoonish robot mode with the smooth lines and panels is really neat, like with the curves and the legs and everything. So good job there, guys. Um, also, I forgot to show this off. Uh, Nemesis Prime or Pliskin here does have his own little evil matrix in the chest. Let me flip these things out here real quick. So yeah, DX9 finally got around to doing a Prime in their Warren pocket line. And it's a pretty darn good effort. I like it. Put the trailers back here behind them. But there it is, DX9's Snake and, or Dutch and Pliskin uh, from their Warren pocket line.